Hello there. This is where the fun begins. Hey there guys, unofficial Star Wars here. Hope you're all doing well, and in this video we are continuing on as a brand new Ahsoka behind the scenes exclusive interview with the director of photography that had worked on the overall Ahsoka Disney Plus show had revealed many tidbits of what it was like working on this show for what it actually has the potential to mean going forward with the future of this series, a potential Ahsoka season two, and just seeing these characters throughout the future of the Star Wars franchise as well. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hop right on into it remember as i had mentioned this is actually a continuation uh part two uh to a video that we just did about two days ago so go check that video out as well if you haven't already in this video we are going to be taking a read from the direct article i'll have their article linked in the description down below for you guys to check out there as well i also mentioned in that first video we didn't complete the full article it was linked in the description down below there as well so really just leaving off from that as a for what the most challenging part of shooting Ahsoka was, the director of photography, Steelberg, couldn't pick out one specific shot being the most challenging part of this overall show and working on it. Although he did reveal that it was the most that he had ever been asked to do in the shortest amount of time for any of his projects before, saying that, in quote, the whole production was pretty challenging. I'd say very challenging in all aspects, creative, technical. It was the most that I've ever been asked to do in the shortest amount of time I've ever been asked to do at any level of of competency that I've said before, it was like being thrown on into the Olympic team and possibly not really being ready for that. But yeah, in terms of the hardest, I don't know what the most difficult was. Ending that quote right there. Giving a little bit of an insight, uh, you know, some tidbits there on what it was like to actually be a part of this production here and filming and working on this Ahsoka Disney Plus show here overall. It seemed to have been very ongoing. It was shot in the midst of COVID. Uh, well, some of it at any, at least anyway, uh, you know, to a point. So yeah, we were working around some of those uh, struggles and obstacles uh, with that for one thing and then also with the the whole idea of like this is part of a major franchise and it needs to turn out just about perfect and they just did about a nail that you know that perfect that perfection of what they had been going for especially for a show like Ahsoka where it's a fan favorite character and she's finally getting her big break of having her own show finally after so many years and then not to mention that you're picking up a huge storyline with Timothy Zahn and his Thrawn novels and bringing that into the Star Wars canon having Thrawn return, having Thrawn in live action, having the return of the Chosen One with Hayden Christensen as another. I mean, there's a lot of big things that the Ahsoka show really brings to the table and that it reveals and that it continues on. As for another thing, it's a big deal and they really do treat it as a big deal and that's something that I really, really love here. And so working on this overall show is going to be a big deal at the same time as well. It's going to be high pace and to a point, high stress, uh, you know, to a point at the same time as well. The article continues by saying that he had specifically touched on the challenges of shooting in the volume or the virtual LED set, pretty much this fancy new green screen or blue screen that much of, you know, modern blockbusters shows and movies have been using, especially over on Disney Plus, comparing it to as his experience using it in The Mandalorian season one and two and three, and looking to improve on what he has done there for this show here as well, saying that, end quote, I would say shooting in the volume or this virtual LED set was really challenging because that was so new to me and it's an evolving thing. So everybody's doing it a little bit different when they used it. And so there's this way that they've been using it on The Mandalorian and those shows that we adopted and inherited and tried to improve upon as they do with every subsequent show that uses it down at that studio. Ending that quote right there, really just taking what the, the volume is, that volume technology is, essentially, if you don't know, as I had briefly touched on, is it's pretty much just this fancy green screen or blue screen that projects the images and builds the set right there and then using fancy pretty much TV screens to a point to build that set like right there in real time. So with that in mind, it's it's new technology and that is a learning curve for one thing. And I've heard other difficulties of actually adapting and to using and, you know, uh, using the overall volume technology uh, for another. He also does touch on, on to the idea of that. Well, yeah, he's, he's worked on previous seasons of the Mandalorian as well, which uses the same technology of the volume. So taking the volume technology and trying to use it and adapt to it and use it in a better manner going down the road and improving with it and improving on it with the Ahsoka show here as another is a whole nother thing that they're trying to do at the same time. 
this became a particular challenge due to the task of having to match something that is this very virtual with things that are very practical, paying tribute to the entire Ahsoka crew from both on the sets and in the behind the scenes. He says that in quote, so I'd say that's it's not a specific scene, but I'd say that that technique and all of those things we did in there required a lot more time and a lot more planning and a lot more creative and technical bandwidth to make it happen and to really blend because you're also matching something that's very virtual with things that are very practical and physical and built that exist in real life. So blending those two things and making sure that they look the same or look that they're a part of the same show, that same world, it was really challenging and it's just a testament to the crew and I have and on set and then the virtual side that was helping us with it ending that quote right there he brings up a very interesting point of as of to how it can be difficult to blend that technology of something that is virtual something that's not really there for one thing trying to blend that to things that are actually there like physically there and actually in existence for one thing your actors but for another using props and everything of that nature is a whole nother thing to tackle so although the director of photography the cinematographer Spielberg came in as a huge Star Wars fan there wasn't anything specific that he had in mind to shoot necessarily only learned Learning about the story after being hired and realizing how many incredible moments that he would get to shoot and work on with this overall show. He says that in quote, there weren't because I mean, when I got, I just really wanted to read the scripts and I couldn't wait. I was given anything before. I was just kind of pitched in a very vague way that the show was and wasn't until I was hired. I was starting to learn about what the story was and read some scripts. Not all of them were available to me though when I had started, but what I did read, I was just flabbergasted. <laughs> this might sound silly. Every scene I read, I was really like, oh my god, I can't wait to do that. And then it would be the next scene, and I was like, how does this keep like every scene there was just something really cool about it and a very different than anything that i've ever done before i'd be like okay i've never done that oh i can't wait to do that that's gonna be fun there it's gonna be hard and that's gonna be exciting uh speeder bike going down the highway how are we even gonna do that i have no idea but like hopefully we can make that look really cool he ends that quote right there really just kind of grasping on the idea of that he's going through the scripts he's reading through this what the story is really going to be like and translating that of how they're actually going to pull those kind of scenes off how that's going to be exciting how that's going to be difficult and kind of pre-planning that in his mind is a very interesting thing to look at overall the article continues by reading that before shooting actually began the cinematographer just had tons of questions for dave filoni himself about what he had actually planned wondering how the vfx crew would bring aspects like lightsabers lothcats and droids to life and everything in between he says that in quote i just had tons of questions for dave filoni about his ideas and his visions and it was made for very very, very constructive and fun, fun conversations. But yeah, I mean, I, I know it's fun to have a story and maybe like, oh, well, it was this shot. It was that thing. But I mean, it was everything. And it was more like, that's so cool. How the heck are we going to do that? How is she going to jump out of this control room with lightsabers through broken glass? How are we going to do her getting attacked by a droid on a catwalk outside at night in a tall building? Like, really, a cat? How are we going to do that? Is this gonna be CG? Oh, a droid. Like he's in so much stuff. Oh, is he gonna be a puppet? Referring to Hugh Yang. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, there's always somebody puppeting him in all of the shots. Okay, it's all exciting. Ending that quote right there. Really just taking it all in. There's a lot of moving parts that go into this Ahsoka show for one thing. That goes really for all of Lucasfilm's Disney Plus projects. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things to consider. And as a DP, director of photography, that is something that they really have to heavily consider and work on and while the challenge was a big one really just at that the overall show being the challenge the cinematographer was excited to embark on things that were written that seemed very very complicated and knew that everything was all going to get done one way or another saying that in quotes despite how hard it seemed i was so excited to jump in and try it and of course it was just could have been done like anything can be done you just got to do it you just got to figure it out and if you don't if you don't have the luxury to necessarily solve it with finances you solve it creatively and we had to do that all the time with these things that were written that seemed very very complicated and then there's all these episodes and you know it was gonna 
get done one way or another because it had to and that's what Dave Filoni wanted so it was just fantastic I jumped into all of it ending that quote right there he even compared some of the moments in Ahsoka to what he saw in the Indiana Jones franchise actually with Dave Filoni and the crew enjoying every moment of developing each and new scene in the show he says that in quotes every episode every episode oh she's gonna fall through a hole and we're gonna be in this underground layer where she's looking for this map and the map comes out of this thing and she breaks it and all of this kind of sand and it's just I would just start talking about how it felt like Indiana Jones and Dave Filoni would say yes and you know it does and that's our conversation for the scene and we would go from a conversation based on that it was just fantastic ending that quote right there just lastly praising Dave Filoni as a director what it was like to work with him and how it was just fantastic to be a part of this overall project despite it being one of the most hardest projects that he's worked on and having the most obstacles at that so this year all being said the question that we're all wondering will Ahsoka get a potential season 2 over on Disney+. Plus. Looking at the final moments of Ahsoka Season 1, the big question remaining is whether the series will move forward into a second season of Adventures. Fans are already wondering whether Ahsoka Tano will find her way back into the original main Star Wars galaxy that we all know and love, although the low viewership for the Season 1 finale may jeopardize that big question actually being answered. Well, not being answered necessarily, but being answered in the way that we probably all want and would hope for being in an Ahsoka Season 2, because that would be something a little bit tough or difficult to tie up in Day Filoni's big Cultimation Mandoverse movie that was announced at the beginning of this year. For now, Dave Filoni remains hard at work on future shows and even a movie in the Mandoverse, while Rosier Dawson's hero and her future remain somewhat up in the air for the time being. This year all being said, I am just such a big sucker for when it comes to Star Wars behind the scenes and learning about that, hearing about that, especially for somebody that is in the film industry and is studying the film industry right now with college classes. I find it so fascinating to hear about that and what it's like translating that to my own life into my own situations at the same time as well is something so fun it's my dream to work on star wars one day so to hear about those behind the scene moments is something truly amazing this year all being said guys let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below i would love to hear what you guys are all thinking in the comment section down below thanks so much for watching today's video of course this has been an official star wars i'll catch you guys in the next one have a great one may the force be with you as always peace out